Hi, I'm Beryl, and this is my pasta recipe for when I don't really feel like cooking but want something nice. I take a pan, put in a bit of butter, some chili crisp, and let it sizzle up. Add in my pasta, add in some green onions, put that into a lovely little bowl, top it with a fried egg, and a little bit of Kewpie because I love Kewpie. It is a simple, spicy, and tasty recipe that uses ingredients that I tend to just always have in my house. The thing is, around the world, everybody has a pasta dish like this. So today we are going to meet nine other people from nine countries and see what their inspirational quick fire pasta recipes are to help you get re-inspired for your next pasta night. Before we get to the pastas, I would like to say that I heard you all finish your pasta in the pan barrel. I acquiesce. I hope you enjoy the extra labor that I put in for you all. Hello, my name is Julia and I'm from Poland. So I don't really know how common this pasta dish is in Poland, but my grandma used to do it. All you need is uh, pasta, smoked bacon and uh, cottage cheese, but like uh, curd, dry curd. Uh, just uh, boil the pasta, fry, ba fry the bacon, mix it all, pasta, bacon and cottage uh, cheese uh, on low or medium heat. Add some salt, some uh, pepper and enjoy. This one looks so delicious. I feel like I already know that smoky bacon and this kind of creamy cheese is going to be a really good combo. Oh, and this bacon is crispy. So simple, really good combo. In America, buying quark cheese or farmer's cheese as it's often called is not always readily available, but you can always sub for ricotta cheese, which is what I did. It's so, like the smoky bacon, I think is really what is setting this off. Oh, I love this. Next time you have like a lazy pasta night and you don't know what to do, do this. Hi Beryl, my name is Rita and I'm from Hungary. We Hungarians like our sweet pastas and one of the oldest version is Grisesh Tasta, which is a cooked semolina uh, put on pasta with jam, usually apricot or plum. And you can use a fettuccine pasta or any type of pasta you have in your cupboard. I promise you it tastes much better than it sounds. I kept thinking that I had done a jam pasta before, but, and I kind of have. I've like, it was jam and cheese, and I've also done like, a walnuts and sugar pasta, which kind of was similar to me because of the crunchy factor, but this is a first. I've also done poppy seed pasta. I've done a lot of interesting kind of sweet takes out, and the strawberry pasta, but I've never done plum jam. I don't even think I've ever had plum jam. All right, enough rattling. God, just eat the pasta already. Tell us what you think. It's good. I stand by, and I've said this in the past, like I don't really know when you would eat this because I wouldn't necessarily want this for dinner, but I'm also never thinking like, oh, could really go for a little sweet treat. Let me boil some pasta. But maybe like a midday snack. I really like it. This plum jam is actually pretty good. I now have a few different types of jam in my house. What am I gonna do with it all? Can't eat that many peanut butter and jellies. I think that for a lot of people, I would agree, it seems strange at first blush, but try jam pastas, cause they're really good. My name is Kuligane and I am from South Africa. I love topping my pasta with eating fish. Essentially, that is canned pilchards or sardines with onions and curry powder. I used to eat this with my sister all the time when I'm visiting her. And we used to make this together. So the brand that we love so much is Ilakista because of the tomato sauce that it comes in. It's so good. And what you can do is on the side, you can have mayonnaise on the side and then you just like eat it and then just dip in the mayonnaise or just mix it all together. It's good either way. I hope you enjoy this. Bye. I have recently grown to really love the sardines in tomato sauce in a can. The first time I had them was on my white rice episode and since then they have popped their head in every now and again and I always really enjoy the flavor. Let's see how this pasta is gonna be. Oh wait. Gotta dip it in some mayonnaise. This is my kind of pasta, dipping it in mayo. That's really nice. 
Ooh, this feels like a fancy-ish kind of meal. The curry powder is giving it like an air of complexity, I would say. And the sardines themselves are a fishy fish, but not the fishiest fish, not like anchovy fishy. I think that these sardines are really good on top of rice, in pasta now, in a sandwich. This is really good. If you're somebody who likes canned sardines, you will really like this pasta dish. And if you like mayo. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Alex and I'm from France. Uh, so my favorite pasta toppings are asparagus and goat cheese. For the asparagus, I use the green ones. And uh, for goat cheese, the best is the croton chef, the very typically little round uh, goat cheese from France. Uh, so very easy, you just have to cut the asparagus in diagonal, cook them in a pan with olive oil, add the pasta cooked, add the cheese uh, cut in, in pieces and stir it up. Et voilà! <laughs> it's very good and very tasteful and I really hope you enjoy it as well as I do. Asparagus are definitely not in season right now. These asparagus cost $7, so they better be delicious. I do like how simple this dish is. I have always been very intimidated cooking French dishes and I have struggled in the past. Mmm. I added a good amount of black pepper because I think black pepper and goat's cheese go really, really well together. It feels kind of like a springtime pasta dish, probably because that's when asparagus is in season, but I like it. I'm getting all the asparagus I can. <laughs> They're too precious. Nothing wrong with a two topping pasta that tastes high end, you know? Very good. A quick interjection before we get to the next pasta dish. I would like to thank Bright Sellers for sponsoring this video. Sponsors like them help me make all of this really fun content. And what a perfect pairing for a pasta episode than wine. Bright Sellers is a wine club that delivers curated wine choices to your door every single month. You don't actually need to know a lot about wine to be a part of this club because they offer this very fun seven question quiz where they ask you about different flavors you like and that will help guide them on the type of wine recommendations that they think that you would like. And their catalogs of wines are huge with hundreds of different wines from over 80 regions across the globe. Each wine that you get comes with a little card that gives you a little bit more information about the wine, what they recommend you pair it with, and what type of flavors you can expect. And one of the great things is if you do not like one of the wines that they send you, you can tell them and they will send you a replacement. It has happened with me before and they did. And it was honestly very fabulous. <laughs> to be honest, I have this romantic notion of a beautiful meal that I've cooked myself sitting around a table with candles and my friends and an amazing bottle of wine. And that is a fantasy that I have had come to life many, many times. And I just think that the right wine with the right people and the right meal is truly a magical experience. And I like that Bright Sellers offers a really easy entry point into that. In the description, you will see all of the wines that I have chosen from them that I have really enjoyed to use it as like a bit of inspiration. There is also a link there. If you click it and do sign up for their club, you will get $100 off your subscription, which that's also a great deal. <laughs> With that, let's get back to some more pasta night ideas. Hi, my name is Elisabetta and I'm from Odessa, Ukraine. So in Odessa, we have this special cheese type product called Brinza. I absolutely love it. So you cook your pasta, you add freshly grated Brinza and you stir. You eat it with fresh tomatoes. The sweeter is the better. And voila, it's super easy to make and it's so delicious. It became a real comfort food for me and I really love it. This pasta to me definitely feels like a summer pasta salad, but I love the fact that it's going to be warm. Whoa, this cheese is like a softer, saltier feta. Feta cheese is absolutely one of my favorite cheeses. The texture of it, the saltiness of it. If you like feta, you will love Brinza. The fact that this cheese was in a can that had like a pop lid, that was very surprising. I was able to find it on a Russian Foods website and I will leave a link in the description. They had, did have a minimum, so I had to buy a couple of other things. <laughs> I bought this beautiful black Russian rye bread and some salmon roe, which is also one of my favorite foods. I make a little toast with that. Ooh, it's really good. 
This is the type of pasta dish I think anybody would love this. Kids, adults, that's that covers everybody. It's just a really good salty kind of rubbery cheese, the best kind of cheese. Hello, I'm Susana from Portugal and the pasta topping I have for you is something that I used to make when I was home alone. My mother was working and I was like 10 or 11 because it's really easy. With one ingredient, you get both crunch and sauce. That ingredient is chorizo. Portuguese style chorizo or Spanish style chorizo. So you put uh, really small pieces of chorizo in a really hot pan and you let it uh, cook until it gets crispy and it basically produces its own sauce because the grease, the grease with all the spices and the paprika starts coming out of the chorizo. And once you have both the crunch and the sauce, you mix in the pasta and that's it. That's as the laziest lunch you will ever make and it's pretty good. It's good only with chorizo, but if you want, you can add some breadcrumbs and maybe some chopped herbs for some freshness. I got the Spanish style chorizo. I think it's so cool, like putting the chorizo in the pan, everything just came together really nicely, nice and red. Maybe not as fire engine red as I thought, but red nonetheless. Oh, chorizo, wow. You know, I was thinking that this pasta was going to be bland. The flavor of the chorizo is so strong mm -mm, that it's all over everything. I'm not getting the crunch of the breadcrumbs like I have in pasta episodes past. I wonder if that's because I didn't like saute them in butter first. I just kind of put them on the pasta. I almost like can't even tell they're on there, even though I do know that I put them on here. If I was to do this again, I think I would toast the breadcrumbs first so they had a little bit more of that crispy crunchiness because that's how they're really nice in pasta when you have the crunch of a breadcrumb. But man, this chorizo, I always forget how much I like chorizo. This is reminding me. Good. Hello, my name is Irene and I'm from Spain. My pasta dish consists of spaghetti with tomato sauce, anchovies, tuna, and lot of cheese. On top, I like to put sliced black collies and a fried egg. The idea of this dish came on a trip to Ireland with my brother. It is a very quick dish to make and keep you satisfied for a long time. It's perfect for touring an entire city. Since that trip, it has remained a traditional dish at home. I hope you like this dish. My kitchen smells. It smells like fish. It smells like anchovies and it smells like tuna. There's a lot. Also, I made a really big bowl of pasta by accident. Um, let's get the egg. Look at that roly-poly. Uh, I think the egg yolk is gonna be really good. I just, why all the fish? Like one seemed enough. I did replace the black olives for Kalamata olives because I don't like black olives. I think they taste a little bit like earwax. And if you're about, how do you know what earwax tastes like? Please. Like we all know, right? I think if I'm just being honest with myself, I just don't love, love tuna and anchovies in pasta. Now that I've tried it multiple times on this channel in the past, like I think this one is just not my thing, but that doesn't mean it won't be your thing. It's just not my thing. Hi Beryl, it's Maddie from the UK and the pasta topping of choice thing you should try is one that is very British in its ingredients and very nostalgic. For me, it's something that I had every single day in school um, in Wales and that is pasta, usually a well-cooked penne, topped with baked beans and then topped with a sharp shredded cheese. Yeah, it's very nostalgic. Me and my friends still enjoy it now on cold rainy days and yeah, it's not complex, it's a little bit controversial, but it's comfort. It's beans and toast by another name. I recently tried beans on toast for my first time for our toast episode and I found it to be <clears throat> just like a little bit bland. So I added a little bit of chili flakes this time because I've, you know, we, it doesn't need to be bland. We can just add chili flakes. This definitely feels like a college meal and I love that. I did a whole episode on college meals and it was really fun. Yeah. I think that what this pasta dish accomplishes very efficiently is that it's cheap to make, it's quick to make, and it will be very filling because it's carbs and the beans have protein and the cheese has some protein. Like, it's good, 
But it also does feel like a college dish. <laughs> Hi, Beryl. My name is Christina and I'm from Serbia. The pasta dish I'm sharing is made with potatoes, so basically combining carbs with carbs. It's made from boiling potatoes and then frying them in a roux made of garlic, onion and sweet paprika powder. So the whole dish while savoury is also quite sweet, which I enjoy. It's a family favourite for the winter months, so I definitely recommend trying it with a side of pickled vegetables. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Prijatno! Pasta with pickles just seems like a good thing. I'm excited. I also love the carbs on carbs. I boiled the potatoes with the pasta. That was a good hack. This is good. I think I'm very surprised. I feel like a lot of the pastas have seemed to me like to be dry. And then when I eat them and I'm like, oh, it's actually pretty good. The paprika definitely has that sweetness that I think like paired with the potatoes and the onions and the pasta, it just kind of, it's very comforting. I've never combined pasta and pickles and that was good. Is pickle pasta a thing? I love that. I mean, I'm actually now not eating what was recommended because the pickles were on the side and I'm putting it together, but very different. Also pickle pasta. So good. I am assuming that you found a little bit of inspiration, but in the off chance that you need more, here is the perfect pasta playlist for you to find more recipes. And here is an easy dinner recipe because pasta kind of fits into that. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I will see you next week.